Hey everybody, this is Jen from Garden Jen's Journey, along with my cat latte. I'll probably trip over it quite a bit. I thought I'd show you, uh, start the video out with something that you're going to see as we go through the through the garden today because it's a very big um, thing. So, here we go. That is a branch from our box elder tree. It came crashing down in the middle of the night and the only way that we knew something was wrong is that our mercury light was out. So uh, it was about 3 o'clock in the morning I came out to let my dog out. I noticed it was really dark and my dog didn't want to come out. I was like okay. And I'm like why is the mercury light out? So I went and grabbed my flashlight, and you couldn't see anything because it was really, really dark out here. So I got my flashlight, and I showed it out here and saw this big monster laying here. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> but I got to show you this. This is just awesome. So this is a very large branch. I mean, I'm standing probably about 20 feet away, and uh, you can see how large it is. And it came from way up there. I don't know if the camera's picking it up really good without the glare. Um, but uh, the amazing thing about this branch, and I'll show you, go over this way, is there's a few leaves right there on that roof there. But uh, the tree basically, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, um, there's lines that go right there. So you can see them there. And they feed our mercury light. Well, the branch is brushed, I mean brushed the, the wires. These are very old copper wires that have been here since the beginning of, of time, so to speak, for this house. And so the wires, um, they slap together. They're, you can see they're twisted together right there and shorted out. Um, they're fine now because one's actually a dead wire. So it was just when they hit together, it shorted out. But now that they're stable, it's fine again. But it didn't break the wires, which was amazing because these are very fragile. They're very old. So that was just interesting. And you can see that from here the garage is still standing, so that's fine. But I'll take you around. <clears throat> Let's see if I can get a better shot of where this guy came from. Way up there. So this this part here stands about eight foot off the ground because I can easily walk underneath it. And then it landed with such force that this guy, which is huge, it's a very large branch. You can see it split. But notice this. This is my um, my overflow bed that we actually, I just made this year. Um, it's got... Uh, I had a bunch of potatoes, so I put potatoes all along here. This is all potatoes. And then um, my extra corn. I have watermelon back there. I'm going to have to fertilize it. It's not doing too good. And then mustard greens and stuff there. And cucumbers here in this little pot here. But I had just put this here. And it's right next to my old chicken run, which is now my dog run. And look at this. This branch is sitting against this doghouse, but it's absolutely not damaged at all. It's not even cracked or anything. So that was amazing. You can see it's leaning against the dog run, but everything's still upright. There's nothing broke on this part. So that was really cool. Try to walk here without tripping over my cat. She gets underneath my feet all the time. <clears throat> so this is our wood pile from when we get wood and chop it up for the winter. But you can see how large this guy is. And right here is our garage. And our garage is is old and it's settling because the ground's really soft so it has its own issues but this tree came crashing down and really didn't do any damage I mean this branch missed it 
here, whoops, this branch missed it. It's shorter than the garage. But this branch didn't over here. This branch actually goes into the garage. And then there's this branch down here that was longer. It busted too. But the garage itself, there's no damage at all. Something that I found kind of funny. My husband was complaining that he's like, my chainsaw's in the garage. How am I going to get to it? Oh, the door, uh, God left a door. He can walk right through here into the garage. That's really cool. So I'm just going to take you in here to the garage. And then we're going to look this way. Another thing that I found funny is, let's see if I can show it to you. My hangers that are sitting on the pallet, just sitting there, they're just standing there too. So I was like, okay, that's really weird. But uh, my garden bend down here, no damage, it's not on there at all. And uh, my other garden bed, excuse me latte, um, I'll take you back over. I don't know if I can show it to you because there's a lot of debris. <laughs> but this is just really cool, so I wanted to share it because when God does something amazing, you need to share it and, and bless others and show others that God does in, indeed exist because this should have done a lot more damage to the property, to the structures than it did, but it didn't. So, okay, I'll see if I can show it to you, but there's a lot of foliage here, so I don't know if it'll show. So right through here, you see this chicken wire here? Just on the other side, this is my um, pumpkin, or er, it has squashes here. And the bed goes just under there and the fencing and everything for it. If you can see it, I don't know if you can or not, but all that fencing is intact. Nothing's bent over, nothing's crushing those baby plants. They're perfectly protected from this behemoth. So that God cares enough to protect my my little plants from this huge, huge plant was just amazing. And the fact that, you know, our, our dog run with the uh, house and the, the fencing, and all, it's perfectly intact. There was enough space in between the run and our wood pile. I mean, our log splitter's right there, too, that God could put this huge branch right here and it not do any damage like I said the only damage that we know of that we have seen is of course the the wires for the light which we'll probably have to replace <clears throat> but this tree itself is actually gonna have to come down because the Lord has showed us and and my husband and I thought so but um you know, from the outside, it's kind of like Christian hearts. From the outside, this tree looks good and vibrant. I mean, you have some bare spots here, little bare spots there, but it's a vibrant, beautiful, huge tree. You think it's fine, not a problem. It's rotten to the core. So this whole thing is actually gonna have to be come down, come down before this branch here. This goes over our house. It'll come down, and the, the Lord can move it if he wants to, but it'll crash on our house. And then this branch over here, that'll crash onto our well house. And so the next time this loses a limb, we might not be so lucky. So just praise the Lord for that. Um, but I'll have to take you the back way to our garden since I can't get through there. <laughs> so I'll take you the back way and I'll show you the the ducks and chickens as we go, I guess. Um, we'll also show you some other things that grew back here that we um, didn't expect. We have a popple tree. We didn't plant that. Uh, at least we don't, we didn't intentionally plant it. Same with this willow tree, but you can see what the willow tree grew from. There's a branch from when we cut up lumber then this other willow tree, same thing. It's a branch that sprouted willows and box elders and popples. If you have green lumber, they tend to they tend to sprout. So that's what this is there. And back here, I see the coop for my ducks is coming along pretty good. My husband works sun up to sundown, so trying to uh, 
find time to finish my run. It has been hard for him, but he's getting there. So, oops, you don't need a butt shot of uh, Butterball. There we go. Hey, Butterball. Uh, so, my chickens are getting big, as you can see. My ices are almost as big as their year-old counterparts. And then my um, pecans. They're just starting to come into breeding age. Um, they're starting to do their mating dance of the head bobs. It's kind of cute watching them. I don't know if you've ever seen ducks do the head bobbing dance ritual kind of thing. But, um, yeah, they're starting to get to mating age, which means we'll have eggs soon. It's supposed to be, I think, the end, uh, middle part of July is when we're going to start having eggs. According to my calendar, their bodies tell them different, of course. All right, so this is my garden. I should probably mention that this is like the third week in June. Just in case you guys watch this at another time. It's the third week in June here. And today is very muggy, very wet. We did have a, a heat index problem last couple days because uh, we had a heat wave come in. But this is my other entrance to my garden. And this is the other side of, of uh, you know, you can see things a little bit better on this side. So, again, I'll show you that one spot if I can. So, there by the water bucket there, just on the other side of that is where my squashes are. And you can't really see them from this angle. But you can see all the foliage from the tree. But yet that spot right there was protected from damage. And again, looking at the, the supports and everything, Everything's fine right here. So, it's really awesome. So, I'll have to look at that one corner post right there. I can't tell if it's uh, just the way the camera's looking or stuff or whatever, but might have a split in that one post there that we'll have to replace. <clears throat> but yeah, this is the tree from this angle. And you can see here again, this is my glass gem corn patch. And again, God protected it. I mean, we have um, some branches laying right here, and we got some, another one here. And uh, but it's it's protected. It's intact. It's just amazing. And then uh, the wire will go up this way. So, and this is the wire that feeds the electric fence for the for the cattle when they come over, when the cows come home, so to speak. <clears throat> anyway, but yeah, so. So that's, that's that. And then I'll take you around the rest of the garden. This is my herb bed. I bring you guys here almost all the time. Um, it's now really starting to look like something. My lemon balm plant, of course, is getting huge. That's some sort of weed, but it looks kind of cool, so we left it there. And then I have another, there's a tree something there. I'm not sure what it is that grows behind my valerian root. But you can see the valerian is now flowered out, and it gets really tall. So... That's the valerian. This year we'll actually be able to dig some of it up. It's in its third year, so we can do that. We can split it and dig it up and actually harvest the root from it. And then more lemon balm. My chives have flowered out. And my chives, uh, I looked them up because I wasn't sure. Somebody asked me what kind of chives I have. These are actually common chives because you have garlic chives and another kind of chive. I can't remember, but these are actually called common chives. They're the ones that had the purple flowers on them. And then this is my uh, Zan or Land chamomile. It's a bigger chamomile than the German. So it's about time for me to start harvesting them. It's been really wacky weather, so it hasn't grown quite yet. My Echinacea. This is purple coneflower. See the flowers are starting to grow. And then the cone's starting to form. So, and then the, I got white yarrow there. I've really thinned it out this year because it got huge. And then I have over there, in that little spot there, that's pastel yarrow. So it'll be like this, except instead of white, it'll be all sorts of different pastel colors. And then the pots, I have snapdragons. These are tall variety snapdragons that I'll get um, quite tall and a lot of flowers. And so I'll keep the pollinators happy. And then I have white whorehound. This plant really, I'll have to look and see what the best way to grow this is because it really struggles. 
<coughs> excuse me. And then I have blue hyssop. It's doing really well this year. And I planted some more. Um, this is milkweed. I usually leave milkweeds in the garden. Um, as long as they're not competing. Like this one I might pull. I'm not sure. Because it's right next to my sage. Um, but with, we have monarch butterflies that come here to Michigan and then go back south. Excuse me. <coughs> Must be the sun. Um, but they need the, the milkweed. This is actually what they, they eat on and they lay their, their cocoon, or their cocoons, their larvae that makes the cocoons and things on milkweed. And so this is an integral part of the environment for uh, monarchs. So we just leave them alone. Uh, if you don't want them spreading, what you do is when they form their, their milkweed pods, is you cut off those pods before they spread. And then in the tires are uh, fig trees, baby fig trees, Chicago figs. And that one's going to need some food or something because it's not doing too well. Uh, this is yellow echinacea. I just planted it this year. It's supposed to be kind of like the purple, but it, uh, it's a yellow color instead of purple. And then I have um, some kind of squash back here. I think it's butternut that I had there, or buttercup. One of the two butters. And then some more lemon balm. And these are my lettuces. So it's time for me to start thinning these out. And uh, I'll start using these as salads right right now. And then uh, once when I thin them out, they'll grow a little bit bigger too. And I have leeks. And these are sunflowers. I have like four different varieties of sunflowers in here. I have kale here, as well as Swiss chard. Um, but the kale, I've noticed my um, cabbage family, they're being eaten. And a lot of people know that cabbage cabbages tend to get eaten a lot by cabbage worms. But I haven't had a lot of cabbage moss around here. Let's see, I can see one right here. Let me see if I can zoom this in. I don't know if it'll work, so hold on. Can you see that little guy right there? Right? Whoops, sorry. Can't show it. I can't point to you, but uh, right there. That is a grasshopper. So my cabbage plants aren't eat, being eaten by cabbage moss. And the same with my beans. I thought I had a slug problem. They're being eaten by grasshoppers. So I gotta figure out how to get rid of my grasshopper problem. I can't let the chickens in here because they destroy the garden. Otherwise, I would let them have my grasshoppers. So this is my tomatoes here. And then the dill that I have growing intermittent with them. So they are taking a long time to grow, but now they're starting to starting to grow. The heat's better. The humidity is better. So they're, they're starting to take off a little bit now. And then I have my peanuts. And there, I have like three or four plants in here, and I haven't decided if I'm going to plant them in the ground or not. Because peanuts, actually, besides just the roots from the plant that's in there now, when they go to flower, the flowers shoot up a, a root of its own that goes down into the ground. And then from that is what where the peanuts come from. So um, kind of like how squash, when it grows out, it roots itself um, as it goes. These kind of do the same thing. So I haven't decided if I'm going to plant these in the ground yet or not. And then uh, these are coxcomb flowers. I have two varieties. Amaranth. I've never grown amaranth before, so we'll see how that goes. Then I have some marigolds and some galardia. And then that's bee balm there. My parsley. Let's see. There's a a little buggy there. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. Probably not, but yep, got little bugs in here that that's what's eating my garden. It's not the usual things. And again, lots of milkweed growing for our monarch butterfly friends. And then under these cages is my sweet potatoes. I had them marked because when the vines are small, it's really hard to see them. My grapes. And then I do have one rose. The rest of my roses have not come back. It looks like they all died. I don't see any new growth at all. And then this is chamomile. This is the actual German chamomile that came from the pot right here. I had this pot sitting over 
there and it reseeded itself. So that's kind of neat. And then these uh, tires contain potatoes. So yeah, you'll see. Potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. So, and then my white radishes. It's time to harvest those puppies. And then along the way, you'll see buckets that have um, uh, carrots in them. My soil's not the best for carrots. They get stunted or uh, they don't grow very well. They'll get curled and stuff. So I plant them in, a, in, a, in buckets in very loose soil. And they seem to do really well that way. And then I have kurabi here. Look at the sad state of my kurabi. Again, it's from grasshoppers. And then this is uh, Lemon Queen um, sunflowers. They are very huge. These guys I did not plant. They reseeded themselves from the sunflowers that were here last year. And then I have some leeks tucked in there. <clears throat> and then over here some more sunflowers. Again, I just leave them if they're not competing with my other plants because sunflowers are vital as well to birds and other pollinators. But this is my Brussels sprout bed. And then I have two kinds of beans here. Um, and then I have uh, beans and lima beans. And then uh, these are bumblebee cherry tomatoes. They actually grow up. So I have them along the trellis so they can be attached to the trellis as they grow. This over here used to be my strawberry bed, and then we cleaned it up, sort of. <laughs> and I'll have to weed this later, but because this has not been mulched or anything. But this is where I have my broccoli. I planted my broccoli right here, along there. So it's doing pretty good. Um, I see one, one grasshopper here. Oh, that's a moth of some type. There. But it's doing all right. A lot of these plants weren't looking too good uh, last week. I gave them some fertilizer, some organic um, fertilizer that was balanced. It had a uh, high nitrogen. Uh, I think it was like a three or a four. As far as for a liquid feed, it was a three or four uh, nitrogen or five. I can't remember. And then the 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 P and K. I can't remember phosphorus and potash. So um, the nitrogen did help, and then. Cause these are really yellow. You see how yellow these guys are? Um, they, these ones and these ones were that color, but the green's starting to come back. So uh, whatever part of the fertilizer it needed, it's taking care of the problem and they're really doing better now. So, but you can see all the holes from the stupid grasshoppers. Ugh. Pain's in the rump. Same here. See all the holes here. From the grasshoppers i did have i did have some cabbage moths I, I will not lie i did have some but we took care of those i made sure to um, remove the worms as i saw them and stuff but we really haven't had any moths the weather's not been right for them so all this damage is from um grasshoppers so there's uh asparagus that that that's last year's and this is this year's right here and this bed here is a combo bed. I have broccoli, um, purple cabbage, green cabbage, um, another type of purple cabbage. I have two purple cabbages. Uh, and then more broccoli. <clears throat> and then over here is my sweet corn. And then I have another beans. And it looks like these guys need some fertilizer. They're, they're a little yellow here. But they're doing pretty good. These guys finally took off this week. I mean, they're really plump and lush and getting ready to go. My peas, I have a hard time with peas. Anybody else have a hard time growing peas? I mean, they're just in a sad state. They just look, yeah. And then here I have garbanzo beans. I've never grown them before. But I do have some weeds in here, and I've been told leave the weeds alone because you don't want to disturb the roots of the garbanzo beans. They're very finicky. So I was like, okay, these weeds I can deal with. These are plantains. This one here, 
and this one. And I can just trim them like I do lettuce because I actually use plantain. You can eat plantain as a green, as a lettuce um, kind of thing, as a spinach. You can eat them like that. And they're also good for medicinal purposes for first aid treatment. So these two I don't mind. It's this one that causes an issue and then the grass, um, if it spreads, that causes an issue. So, and then I have my garlic here. So that's what my garden looks like right now. And looky here, strawberry tower has not really been doing too well. I mean, I've lost a lot of plants, but look here. I have some sad state of strawberries, but I have strawberries. So, <laughs> anyways, I just might, what I might end up doing is ripping out all the strawberries and giving them to my chickens, because they just might not be the right kind of strawberries for this area, because they don't do well at all. But anyways, that's what my garden looks like. That's how the hand of God operates. Just amazing. Um, so, oh, I should show you my elderberry bushes before I end the video, because uh, that's pretty neat too. So, uh, over here, I have these pellets here because we, we use them for, obviously, pellet fence gardening and other things, but um, these are my elderberry bushes and they've gotten really big, really, really big. I'm really excited. These guys are two, three years old now. The first year, they were kind of stunted. The second year, which was last year, they did pretty good. I had, they're about half the size that they are now. They had only about three or four real good shoots that had uh, flowers on them. But now you can see they're really, really big. And they've got quite a few shoots with uh, flowers on them. Uh, once they once they pollinate and start getting those green berries on them, I will be covering the berries with tool so the birds don't eat them all. I do leave like one or two um, plants uncovered. That way the birds can enjoy some of it. I mean, I'm not a total greedy butt, uh, but um, I do cover the others so I can harvest some elderberries for myself. And then this is the baby over here. I'm not sure if I showed you in the last video how I had to protect this guy. I gotta walk around all these posts here. Uh, but this is the baby that's been trying really hard to live. Um, it's a it's a sapling from that one right there um, that we planted over here. Um, but there used to be a lean-to kind of that went over this coop here that provided more of a kind of like a porch right here, like about to here. So this area was covered from the weather. But when we dismantled it, the, uh, the board that went up, the plywood, which is basically that piece there, fell on top of this and broke it right down, busted it right off. So, um, didn't know if it was going to survive, but it came back this year. And again, somebody dropped something on it, snapped it right in half again. But this thing has a will to live because it's come right back. I have the PVC around it to mark it and protect it so people quit like like this would fall on it. So, you know, people are just not very uh, careful around here. So I've been babying this baby. So anyway. But yeah, this is the duck coop that we've got going on. Um, slowly but surely. But the, the fence for the new enclosure, because we're bringing it out, it's gonna go basically from from where the crack is on the on the garage. And like I said, this thing's old and it's settling, it's in sad shape right now. Anyways, the fence will go from there in front of my elderberry bushes there to over here, and then from this wall out, it'll kind of be a wedge shape. And then uh this will be their new coop, which will fit nine ducks compared to where they are now. And once we get this all opened up, we'll be able to dig dig out a bigger pond. So we've found a size that we think will work very well for nine ducks of this size. So we're, we're not sure if we're going to buy a stock tank. There's a very nice stock tank that would be perfect size. Or if we're just going to use those measurements to build our own. Because my son had gotten a pool last year, one of those above ground pools. But we had uh, really bad winds last year, 
and uh, it was empty for the season and while well, the winds destroyed it so we're going to use the the liner because the liner's fine it was just all, all the supports were bent and twisted and you know just tossed around we're going to use the liner to um, build a new pool that way is what we're thinking for the ducks so yeah so yeah my house looks kind of ugly <laughs> from this angle um it's a very old old house um but it is what it is you know you take what you can get what the lord blesses you with and uh go with it so we have an old ugly house but there's lots of love inside and uh we took this property and uh you know, try to make it what we can with the garden and everything. Um, my son often complains because we came from a beautiful three-bedroom, two-story, well, three if you count the basement because I have a full basement, uh, garage with, or not garage, apartment with a two-car two garage and um, full basement and air conditioning and all the amenities and yada, yada, yada um, to this place. And this place is very uh, modest. It's a smaller home. It's an older home. Um, it doesn't have all the amenities in it. But what I tell him is we traded space of the inside of the home for space outside because we were living in the city at the time. So we didn't have any room to even walk out and get a breath of fresh air without neighbors running dead to you or party people or sirens going off or whatever but now we we live out here in the country with uh, uh the the house itself sits out on a, just about an acre and then uh it's surrounded by uh the additional 40 acres or 39 or whatever of the pasture that's actually part of the property um that gets used for cattle so we live amongst the cattle people out here and just absolutely love it. So, even though at times we get a little irritated, you know, um, everybody does once in a while that um, they're frustrated with their living arrangements or their job's not right or whatever. It's still a major, major blessing. Um, the landlords that we had at our uh, apartment were very greedy, mungy, hungry, mis they mismanaged their property, uh, very hard to get any maintenance done. It was just, it was a headache. So it was a beautiful home, but it was a headache. Uh, where out here, uh, our landlords are very gracious people, uh, love them to pieces. And, um, you know, they do what they can uh, to help us and we do what we can to help them to make sure that the house is maintained um, and uh, it's just a much better off situation out here. So you win some, you lose some, but you have to look at what you're winning and what you're losing. And sometimes what you're losing isn't as much as what you're gaining. Like this tree. My husband was worried about this tree just because of this right here. I don't know if you can see it from here. There we go. This right here. It was, I had to laugh this morning because this is our dog run or our well I guess it's our dog run for when we don't want to put the dogs in the dog run we have uh, a dog a golden retriever who likes to run uh, he likes to go and not come back because he has some mental issues and yeah he doesn't know coming back so we put him on his run so he can go out and go potty and whatnot. But this is the only place we have it. The run goes from that branch there that connects right to our porch there. So we can put him on his lead and he has this whole area. This is poo tree. That's what we call this. We call this poo tree because this is where he goes and does his thing. This is his poo tree. So if this tree comes down we won't have the run anymore because the you know it'll be gone this tree will be gone and Dyson won't have his poo tree he might get confused on where he's supposed to poo <laughs> so 
I just had to laugh. You win some, you lose some. But honestly, I think once this tree comes down, uh, it'll be much better off anyways, because that's, like I said in the beginning of the video, it looks beautiful right now, except for the gaping hole right there. But let me take you around to the other side. Um, again, because I didn't show you this side um, when I took the video. My husband knew there was something wrong with this tree last year. So you can see that this is the core of the tree. That's why, let's see if I can show you on this. I have to go really up, so I don't know if I'll be able to do it or not. Watch your head. You see how rotten that is? It's just rotten. So that's why it broke. You have about, about two or three inches of live tree, and then all the rest was rotten. So, like I said in the beginning, it's kind of like Christian hearts sometimes. Um, you look all good and beautiful and lush on the outside. You have what looks like new growth. I mean, this is brand new branch this year. New growth. You're looking awesome. But pride comes before the fall. So thank you everybody for watching. Don't be prideful. Be humble. And remember to be thankful for everything that you have. Even when it doesn't seem like a lot. Because sometimes less is indeed more. This is Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. Bye-bye.